Oh, oh, you again. Welcome back. Oh, no. Drawing is hard. It always will be. But what's even harder is getting started. What do you focus on? There's so much to learn. What's important? What isn't? <sighs> no more worries. I got you. I'm Mark. I've been a professional artist for many dozens of months and now I teach art for a living. In this week's episode of YouTube Art School, I'll introduce an epic 30-day plan that I've carefully crafted for you, my dear subscriber, to follow. To learn how to draw in 30 days. Wow, is this real life? Uh oh, yikes, quickly, class is starting. class is in session pay attention and pay the class fee of either one like or one sub or else the youtube police is gonna get you just kidding i can't even verify so let's just move on today i'll be going over 30 exercises that i've professionally planned to take you from zero to not bad more specifically though these exercises will train you over the next 30 days to think like an artist. It should unlock how you see things and how you approach drawing anything. And I'd argue it's not only for complete beginners. If you have some experience drawing, I'm sure some of this will be pretty tricky for you as well. It's my experience that everybody skips on fundamentals, the most important stuff, and we're gonna fix that. These exercises will be pretty simple, so it should only take you a couple of minutes every day. It's definitely not a big commitment. And also, it took me a long time to plan this and, you know, put this together and to accumulate all the knowledge that made this possible in the first place. So please don't use this for your own YouTube videos or for your TikTok videos. You can refer your friends back to this video instead. That's much appreciated. All right, let's get right into it. For the first couple of exercises, we're going to be focusing on super simple stuff, but we'll increase difficulty as we make our way through the 30 exercises. You'll see, you'll be very surprised by the results if you put in some time and effort and stick to it. For the first exercise on day one, we're starting easy. We'll be drawing a circle. Oh no, not a dang circle. I take it back, it's not that easy. And we're also not gonna be drawing a circle. Instead, we'll be drawing a sphere that we're going to cut in half in any angle you prefer. For this, I highly recommend that you draw the entire ellipse on the inside and erase the part of the line that ends up behind the sphere. It's a lot easier. On day two, we'll draw two spheres this time. Two spheres that are overlapping, one behind the other. We'll do the same thing we did on day one and cut them in half as well at two different angles to mix things up a bit. On day three, we're subtly introducing perspective by drawing a row of spheres, one behind the other, all converging towards a single point. Every chance you get, I recommend practicing cutting your volumes so I did here, but it's not required this time. The next day we'll be drawing another sphere, but, uh, but don't worry, that's gonna be it for a while. I promise to stop making you suffer like this. This time we're going to be introducing a light source coming from above, so we'll need to add a round shadow on the ground and shade the sphere lightly to better convey form. Day five is graduation day. Graduation from drawing circles. This time we're moving on to another extremely core shape in art, cylinders. Draw three of them of different sizes. I won't be specifying if you should draw some shading anymore, so it's up to you. Do it if you're confident. Next up, we'll start by drawing some more complex 2D shapes, and then we'll give them volume. Just make sure that your parallel lines showing the thickness are parallel. On day seven, we'll move on to drawing simple cubes. Draw two of them floating in space from different angles. It's easier to read the shape with shadows, so let's add some on one side of each cube. One week down, starting the second one with day eight. To make sure we haven't forgotten how to draw circles, let's draw two eyeballs looking in the same direction. And by the way, if you're curious how long you should spend on each of these exercises, really spend as long as you need to be satisfied with your results. Might be a couple of minutes, might be half an hour. It'll be different for everyone. So for day nine, we'll draw a pyramid of cylinders and cubes three or more pieces high. And then we'll cut all of those volumes in four pieces or more. Nice little stack there. And then on day 10, one third of the way complete, the exercise will be to draw a full sphere, cylinder and cube, and then draw the halves only for those same three. 
You can cut them any way you like, as long as it's in half. Moving on to day 11, and we'll draw two rows of overlapping spheres converging to a single point, and then slice them up in four pieces. You should be pretty good at drawing circles by the end of this. Next, we'll draw a bunch of wiggly cylinders bent in different ways, also cut into four equal parts. These recent ones are getting pretty hard, so try your best, but don't beat yourself down too much if it doesn't come out as good. All right, on to day 13. We'll repeat the process again, but with boxes this time, bending them and twisting them in a bunch of different ways. And but let's also split these shapes into four or more equal sections. For day 14, we'll bring back the sphere, but with a different twist. Technically, we'll be drawing three separate slices that make up a sphere, like we just sliced it with a knife. Chop, chop. Now, day 15, we're going to be drawing a more complex structure of your choice. Doesn't have to be like mine, but we'll start from a box. The challenge will be to extrude a bunch of other boxes or cylinders to end up with some sort of blocky construct. And you don't have to do this last step either, but choosing all faces facing the same direction and adding some shading there really helps this to read better. And we're already halfway through the challenge. The progression in the exercises and the topics that we tackle here is what makes all the difference. None of this is random. And a couple of things should have started to click if you've been at this for two weeks now. Keep it up. And if you're one of the 12,000 students part of my art school program, I'm sure this feels familiar because it's been heavily inspired by the structure at the beginning of the program. If you're not yet a student of mine and you'd like to learn in great depth all the skills needed to draw or paint literally anything your mind can imagine, check the coupon down in the video description for a huge discount on my complete art education program. Valid all the way through the end of the month. The price will be increasing slightly at the end of the month, so it's always better to get it sooner than later. Existing students get all future updates and additions forever. Coupon and link down below. Don't miss out. Now let's begin the second half of our challenge with day 16. This time we'll be drawing three different balls. One based off of a cube, another from a sphere, and the last one from a cylinder. Try to make them as symmetrical as possible. It's not easy. On day 17, we'll continue with more figurative drawings by illustrating a bunch of semi-straight cylinders all tied up together with a torus, a donut shape. Don't hesitate to erase as you draw more and more cylinders for your bunch like I'm doing here. Now, on day 18, we'll draw a totem made out of different volumes, basically a stack of 3D shapes that we've been practicing. We can also make this look like a sad character-like structure, missing a head if we add two cylinders or like two arms to it this way. Done. What a beauty. On to day 19 then. This stuff is getting pretty advanced, but also kind of simple if you've been following along. It's just really a slightly different take on what we've been doing so far. We'll draw a complex box with various volumes extruded and carved into the original box almost looks like a house, no? And by the way, just feel free to use a ruler or a straight line tool in your painting software to draw up some guidelines first if it's too hard to freehand it. Now moving on to day 20. We'll draw a cup of coffee with a handle and a floating marshmallow or like an ice cube, whatever. The saucer here is optional. For this one though, no tools, all freehands. We're starting to get some pretty advanced results here. This is not easy. Mmm, I feel like having coffee. As we roll into the final 10 days of the challenge, we're finally introducing real constructed perspective. We'll draw two different boxes in one point perspective and then cut them in two more equal pieces. We'll start with the horizon line, then your vanishing point on the same line. Notice the lines giving those boxes their height and their width are always perfectly vertical and perfectly horizontal. It's only the lines giving the boxes their depth that will all be converging towards the vanishing points. And to find the center of any face, by the way, draw lines across opposite corners and X marks the spot. This stuff might be a bit overwhelming if you've never tried it before, but it gets pretty easy after just a couple of tries, so stick with it. On day 22, we'll draw another box in one point perspective, again starting with the horizon and our single vanishing point, but we'll chop our box and erase parts of it in such a way to transform it into a complex volume. Almost looks like a couple of little houses. Next is day 23 and we're really nearing the end. Keep this up. 
This time, let's draw a short street with a sidewalk and a few buildings in one point perspective. I say sidewalk and buildings, but that sounds way scarier than it actually is. Really, I mean simple boxes arranged side by side. On day 24, we're finally moving on to two point perspective. Oh snap! The goal will be to draw a chest in two point perspective. And if the idea of drawing a chest makes you panic, you can just draw a simple box instead, no worries. Now, same as with one point perspective, we start with the horizon line, the first and the second vanishing points in this time placed on the horizon. And now the height of the box will still always be a perfectly vertical line. Nothing changes from one point perspective yet, except now the lines giving the box its width will be converging to the first vanishing point, while the lines representing the depth of the box will be going towards the second vanishing point. Yikes, got all that? Might need to watch this again. On day 25, we'll put our new two-point perspective skills to the test by drawing a simple building corner, or like the corner of a room, that works too. We'll need to add either a window or a door or both if you want. Just like this. This looks a little funky because the vanishing points are close together, but it's a simple house in two-point perspective. How cool is that? Very cool. Now, for day 26 of the challenge, we'll draw a simple hand made out of cylinders, spheres, and boxes. It's a tricky structure, but it's still only using pieces that we've seen and practiced so far. Use your own hand as reference or a photo to guide your form. On day 27, we'll start a simple maze in two-point perspective. Probably best to use straight lines instead of freehanding it like I'm doing. Also a good idea to select faces pointing in the same direction once you're done and shade them the same way to help organize all these details visually. It's pretty busy. For day 28, we'll draw a floating box with an X on one side and make it rotate 90 degrees or 180 degrees, whatever you prefer, using six or seven drawings. Don't worry about vanishing lines and the horizon this time. Now for the last two days, let's crank up the intensity a bit, shall we? Let's draw um, a hand holding a long cylinder using your own hand as reference. This is easier if you start with simple volumes like we did earlier first, and then add details once the form is mostly there. And then finally, oh, here we are, the final day of the challenge time to see how much better you got. We'll draw a simplified skull using reference as the last exercise. If you think in simple volumes first, blocking it out or constructing it with boxes, cylinders and spheres, just like we've done so far, the process becomes a lot easier. Try not to just copy what you see, construct it first. And with that, I've just completed my own learn to draw in 30 days challenge. Now it's your turn. Of course, I'd love to see your progress if you do give this a go. So make sure to all use the hashtag learn to draw in 30 days if you post your daily progress on social media. Search for the hashtag too to see how others are doing. Also, I did the demo exercises digitally, but don't hesitate to do them with a good old pencil and paper. That works just as well. If you do do them digitally though, and you're interested in trying the custom brush that I used for it all, because it's amazing, you can grab it as part of my free brush pack with the link in the video description, right below the link to my art program. It's my favorite line art brush. I use it all the time. And I also have a Clip Studio Paint specific version, link also in the description. Anyways, I hope this helps. No. I know it will. And I can't wait to see how well you do. Now make sure you have the bell turned on to be on time for next week's class. And in the meantime, check out these other free art classes you might like. See you in there. Welcome back. Oh no.